Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog video. Today I'm looking at Loopback from Rogue Amoeba. This is version 2, I just got an update, and it's a really interesting software for taking uh, outputs of audio interfaces and different pieces of software, mixing them down however you like um, on multiple channels, which are then available as inputs in other software. Um, and then we can monitor that through this device as well. This is Mac only software, so you guys on Windows, I don't mind if you uh, just click away, uh, but if you wanna stick around, that's really appreciated as well. So in the interest of full disclosure, I did ask to get a review copy of this to share my findings about this software, whether I like it or not, with my audience. Um, so thank you to Rogue Amoeba for uh, quickly getting me that review copy. Let's first start with the problems I'm kind of in this unique situation where I have to record and edit videos. I use a software called ScreenFlow to uh, capture the my voice and the screen video, sometimes a webcam as well, plus um, the audio output from Reaper. What that looks like if I go to a new project in ScreenFlow, um, I would have my audio interface here. I can choose which uh, inputs I want to record on and where it's going to be panned and some volume. Then there's also this record audio function and I have to actually set Reaper to output to this special device or it just records empty. So it's just totally silent. And what that looks like inside Reaper, I go to audio device settings and instead of using the audio fuse, I would go to the Telestream driver, which is the one for the ScreenFlow software. I can get audio out of Reaper into ScreenFlow. I can monitor it normally. This is just really just a pass-through sort of device where whatever audio goes into this device is then able to be picked up by ScreenFlow, passes it through to my default audio device. So that works fine, except I have no inputs. So if I want to demonstrate how to record audio, not possible. Kind of a big problem. So this loopback software, would allow me to take the output of Reaper directly, route it into channels three and four of this special driver called, which will be called loopback audio for screen recording. And then that's available as an input. Oh, if I enable it here, I'll enable that here, go to screen flow and loopback audio for screen recording. And so I've got my voice here and I've got output of Reaper and you can see that here. So I'm just going to start this over again so you guys can see the process of actually setting this up. It's pretty simple. So I go to new virtual device, I'm going to remove the pass through device, which is kind of like a, a virtual driver sort of thing. Um, it's available as an input in other software. We're just going to delete that for now. So I'll put in my audio interface first. And because my microphone is always going to be on input one, I'm just going to select the cable and press command delete to remove that. And I'm going to add a, a second cable to uh, channel two of this output channel. I'm going to add in another channel. So I have another stereo device available or a stereo input available in the other software. And I'm going to add in some more sources like Reaper. And that's going to default to channels one and two. So I just have to shift click those two and delete and then drag th those cables into channels three and four. There isn't a way to, to take a cable and move it to another input or output. You have to select it, then delete it. That's a bit of a pain. On each source device, I do have some options like mute when capturing and then an overall volume control. So I can turn this down a little bit and then add in my next source, which could be Skype. And again, that's going to default to channels one and two. And I just need to reroute this to channels three and four. And we can't zoom in this. I find that um, unless I'm zooming in the screen, it's a little tricky to select those cables once we get in a few devices, but let's just keep going iTunes is another one here. I'm gonna shift click those two, delete. Yeah, so the same process. I've got Skype, Reaper, and iTunes 
plus my audio interface there. If I want to monitor, I can add in the audio fuse again. There's situations where you want to mute when capturing and situations when you don't. Um, so if I play this now, all right, uh, and make sure that I'm going onto the audio fuse output, this, I can hear it in my headphones right now. You, you might not be able to hear it. You're probably not going to be able to hear it in the recording right now. But I'm going to go to uh, loopback. I can see that the output of Reaper is here. I can adjust the volume. And that controls the output going into this section. But later on, when I actually set ScreenFlow to use this driver, I may not be able to hear it. So um, because the audio is kind of being captured by this virtual device, and this mixer then determines where it's going to go. Uh, I may actually need to unmute this so that I can hear it. If I unmute the audio fuse in the monitor section, then I'll hear my voice twice and with a delay. So there's, there's a bit of a trade-off there. To hear everything through the audio fuse, I'll either have to deal with latency or unmute um, when I'm capturing. Whether you mute or not is going to be sort of system-specific depending on the devices you need to use. Um, if you're hearing things doubled, you might want to mute or unmute things. Oh, and this mute function here does not actually affect your recording software, uh, what you're summing this down to. So that's always going to be active, but this volume control does affect the recording level. So the last thing I'll do here is just name this Bootback Audio for Recording and save that. So I'm going to pause the recording, switch over to the other device, this loopback audio for recording device, and then we'll just do a quick test. Okay, so now we're going to do a test. I've got my voice coming in, input one. It's going to be recorded into channels one and two inside of ScreenFlow. And then all my other inputs are going to be, or all of my other audio sources are going to be then put onto channels three and four. Um, I'll have to be careful not to play multiple sources at the same time, but it's no big deal because that rarely happens. So those are going to ScreenFlow. And one thing I didn't catch before is that the output routing was going to the audio fuse, and that's totally unnecessary. I don't need to do that. So uh, ScreenFlow is recording this setup right now, and I'm going to play in iTunes. Let's just check the level. I can't hear it, so I'm going to unmute here. And I should say that this doesn't affect the monitoring volume. So if iTunes is coming out really loud in your headphones when you're doing something like this, then you have to manage it somewhere else. This is just going to control the uh, level going to the recording or to OBS or wherever you're sending this later. And then Reaper will switch back to here. Not hearing it in the headphones, so I'm going to have to monitor it in loopback. So then I'll just end my screen capture and see what we get. All right, so back in ScreenFlow, I've got this clip here, which is all the audio that was recorded. If I right click it and go to extract audio, I can see that there's actually four channels is what we wanted. And click on all channels, we'll extract all those channels. So here are my four channels of audio, and here is the video. Um, I did do a setting in uh, ScreenFlow's, um, if I go here, I can actually choose the panning of each of these inputs, and I can choose which ones are recorded, the levels, things like that. So I've got me talking, and that sounds normal, and I've got my iTunes audio. And you can hear when I'm adjusting the volume, that did affect the recording level. Loopback is available from rogamoeba.com. They offer a free download, which is really just the demo. You get 20 minutes to try it out without any restrictions. Then the audio quality will be degraded. You'll get a pop-up. If you just restart, you can continue using it. But within 20 minutes, you can kind of figure out whether it's going to work for you or not. If you are happy with it, you think it'll solve problems for you, you can purchase it for 99 US, 
which is a lot of money. I don't know of any other options. You know, there there was things like uh, Soundflower for the Mac, but it doesn't really solve, you know, the volume controls, the the routing to different channels. It never really worked as good as this does. And that's not to say I don't have complaints about the software, because I, I actually do. And let's go through those now. First is that um, selecting the cables and, and then deleting and then drawing them in again to reroute is really annoying. I would prefer if I could just cl- like maybe command click to redirect a cable without deleting it first, or if I could right click on anything. So if I have this selected and I shift click on a cable, see everything got selected there. If I thought it was just that one cable, I'm not paying attention and hit command delete. All that stuff is going to be gone and there's no undo. Big problem number two, no undo. Big problem number three, there's no way to export your settings. So if you want to back up your settings, it's not possible. There's nothing in the menus to back this up. In preferences, it's just check for updates. There's, yeah, there's no way to unlock advanced options. There are no meter markings here. It kind of just shows you whether you have a signal or not. Um, And when you're adjusting the volume, there's no indication of how much you're adjusting the volume by 6 db 12 db 120 db you have no idea it's just it's not even a percent it's it's just a slider so it's very mac like in that regard maybe they can add in an advanced mode for those that think these numbers actually matter because often it does so yeah i'd recommend this if you are using obs for streaming on a mac or if you are doing screen capture tutorials recording interviews via Skype, it can often be a challenge to get proper audio looped back without causing feedback loops with the possibility of recording it discreetly um, on individual channels, those sorts of things. Um, I think this is the only thing out there. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I hope you found this interesting and useful, check out the demo at rogamoeba.com slash loopback. And there will be a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. 